We're skipping over chapters 9, 10, and 11, which would complete the doctrinal portion of the book of Romans. Chapters 9, 10, and 11 primarily deals with the salvation of the Jewish remnant. Maybe the Lord will allow us to uh, teach on that at a later date. Amen. We trust that you have read through those three chapters. Amen. Chapters 9, 10, and 11. Amen. Which concludes the doctrinal part of the book of Romans. Amen. Which begins in the third chapter. See, the doctrinal portion. Amen. I'm sorry. The doctrinal portion begins in the first chapter. First chapter. And the 18th verse. And it goes all the way through. Amen. To the 11th chapter. That's the doctrinal. So uh, we can see that the book of Romans primarily uh, the Apostle Paul is teaching on the doctrine of what? Salvation. Am I right? From the first chapter, starting at verse 18, all the way through to the 11th chapter, he deals with the doctrine of salvation. Amen? He talks about justification from chapters 3 to the end of chapter 5. Amen? He talks about sanctification because we said that the there are two steps according to the way that Paul taught it and, the way, and, and according to the way that it is. Amen. There are two steps in the work of salvation. The first step is justification by faith. And then when you say justification, really what you're talking about is forgiveness. That's the first far, part of salvation is you first have to be forgiven. Your sins have to be remitted. And the word justification is the theological term that denotes forgiveness of sins and is, is through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, but it's appropriated by faith. And therefore, uh, Romans 5 and 1 said, what? If you don't know it, look in your Bible. If you're looking at me, you can, that means you can quote it. <laughs> I keep telling y'all that. If you're looking at me, you, you, then you're quoting it. If you can't quote it, then open your Bibles and read it. <laughs> Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Amen. Justification is just the first step that does not complete the work of salvation. After being justified, if you have truly been justified, that means that you have, you have uh, demonstrated the works of faith, working faith. And the work of faith as it pertains to salvation the action of faith. Y'all help me say faith is an action word. Faith is an action word. Amen. James elaborated on that. James said, you show me your faith without my work, without your works, and I'll show you my faith with my work. He's just saying you have faith, but you don't have no actions to back it up. It's like seeing a man hungry and you telling him to be filled, but you're not giving him nothing to eat. Am I right about it? It's like to tell the man to be clothed. He naked. You tell him, be clothed. But you don't give him nothing to cover himself. You talking, but you don't have no actions. See, a lot of people got dead faith. That's what James introduces us to the term dead faith. Like the body without the soul is dead. So faith without works is dead. But working faith, as it pertains to salvation... Uh, the works of faith is what? Y'all help me say repentance, confession, and conversion, which means to turn away from everything that's wrong. And so that's the first step. When you have placed your faith in the Lord, you are justified. Am I right about it? But when you're truly justified, that means the work of sanctification, which is the second step in the process of salvation, the work of sanctification has begun because you are washing. And, and uh, Psalms 119, and I believe it's 9, or 119 and 6. I believe it's 9. It said, Whether with all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed there too, according to thy word. So when you turn away from your sins and you've been converted, amen, that's, that's the beginning of sanctification right there. Am I right about it? And it's complete by the purification by fire. The work of sal sanctification is complete by the sanctification or the
purification by fire. And what am I talking about when I say the baptism by fire? Talk to me. Uh huh. What is the baptism by fire? Ba- y'all help me say baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right. That's when the that's when the work of sanctification, being purified, is complete. See, that's what that's what that's why the Holy Spirit is called a seal, because it is the finishing touch on the work of salvation. You've been purified by fire. I can't stress that too much. I told you. You can wash something in water and it's clean. Hello, somebody. You sanctify yourself. That's when you get converted. But when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, now you're being purified by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the Holy Spirit purifies you to what God's requirement is. And what is God's requirement in 1 Peter 1 and 15? Holiness. The Holy Spirit purifies you by fire and makes you Holy. Am I right about it? That's sanctification. Am I right? Uh, and so now we're going to move on to the next uh, division, which is the third division of the book of Romans. Amen. We've completed uh, the doctrinal division, uh, but we didn't deal with 9, 10, and 11, but you read through it. So we're going to the practical teaching, Paul's practical teaching. And uh, that's chapters 12. We're going to deal with 12 and 13. But the practical teaching, the third division of the book of Romans, amen, would include chapter, chapters 12, 13, 14, chapters 15 from, verse, from verses 1 through 13. That's the practical teachings. And the emphasis in the next four chapters is...